Welcome back to another episode of Teardown Tuesday. Today we're taking a look at a gas pressure regulator, but it's a little different than the ones you're used to seeing. So this style regulator is called a straight through flow regulator. And it's got a straight through pathway down the middle for that gas flow to move through. So if we put the screwdriver in the bottom here, you can see it comes right out the top. The gas can flow straight through this regulator. And down inside here is a cone-shaped valve, a conical valve. And it's hard to see right now, but we'll get it apart further. You'll be able to see more in detail. But let's compare it to other regulators first. So we use the screwdriver to go all the way through. If we take a look at our RV48, this is the most standard or most common regulator we see. It's called a poppet regulator. If we tried to do that same thing, our, our screwdriver gets caught down here in the, the flow path where the poppet is. If we take a look at the, three, the 325L that we tore apart a few months ago with the dead end lockup lever action, we have the same problem. We're not able to go straight through the valve or straight through the regulator. So in this regulator, the RV61, we can. And because we have that straight flow path, we're able to pull much more gas volume through this regulator. But because we don't have any kind of dead end lockup, we can't regulate the pressure with no flow. So if there's no gas moving through the system, the regulator just doesn't work. So the typical application for this is on a main burner of a system. So you'd have a pilot that lit, and then you would have the regulator like this only on the main burner line and only seeing gas when that solenoid or valve opened for main burner. This style valve is big. I don't know if it's entirely clear how big it is, so we'll use the, the little RV48 here for example, but you can start to see just how big the opening is on this. This is an inch and a quarter, one and one quarter inch NPT or National Pipe Thread opening. So we can move a lot of volume through here. We can get a lot of BTUs out of the gas volume. If we compare this again to the 325L, you can see that the, the top, the lid here, is remarkably similar. It's roughly the same size. And this is just the top cover or the top hat. But it gives you an idea of the difference in capacity here just in terms of the opening and the, the size of the passage through the center of the body. So just like our 325, to get this thing opened up, we're going to have to knock these rivets out. But before we do, let's just talk real quick about the, the basic features of this. So you can see on the top here, we have our model number, the RV61. One half PSIG is our maximum pressure, and then our output is adjustable from four to eight inches water column. We've also got a vent up here, a threaded vent, and that's because we have a diaphragm under this cover and the air between the top of the diaphragm and the inside of this housing has to be able to change pressure. It has to be able to breathe in and out through that vent. So let's go ahead and knock these rivets out. We'll get it opened up and start to see what's going on here. And let's go ahead and get the cap off here. And we know from experience that the inside of this will have another adjuster. That's just a cap that we pull off. We'll have another adjuster, and there's probably a pretty good sized spring underneath this. So there's our spring adjuster, and there's our spring. And if we look down in there, you can see the top of the diaphragm. Looks like we can also get this cover plate off. Let's do that here before we knock the rivets out. All right, so underneath the bottom here, you can see the what I think is the bottom of the, the cone that's attached to that diaphragm. You can actually hear the, the vent whistle as we move in and out there. Yeah, so there's our cone. And now you actually get a really good view into what's going on inside this straight through regulator. 
So you can see the, the inlet passage over here feeds in and the outlet passage over here feeds out and we just have this big open space in between. Now when we needed to reduce that flow, the diaphragm lifting up would pull this cone up to block that passage. But as that flow needed to increase, the cone drops down and in its, its most open position, we get an almost completely unrestricted path straight through the valve. So we go from full closed to full open. It's a pretty interesting setup here with the, the cone. And it's hard to tell from just looking at it on a video, but this feels like it's metal. It feels like it's aluminum. It's not rubber. It's not soft. It, it has no wear part to it. It's just got a coating on it. But let's go ahead and knock these rivets out and we'll take a look at the, the inside of the diaphragm. All right, took a little effort there to get the rivets knocked loose. Had to drill two of them. But now we can separate our cap. We've got a standard cork gasket there. And now you can see the diaphragm assembly. And in this case, the diaphragm is super thin. It's very thin. It's almost like a sheet of paper is about the thickness. So it's a little different than like our, our 325L that had this really kind of heavier material. Still not super thick. But then when you look at the RV48, the RV48 has a very thick rubber material. So we've got the supporting plate. We've got the very thin material here. allows it to move very easily. And then the supporting pin goes down through. Now when we look down inside this part of the body, you can see they've left this passage unmachined. So there's a support here for the center pin, but the gas flow itself is happening inside this contained space down here. We've got a small passage drilled through into the outlet that comes out right in the base of the threads there. And that little passage gives us some flow into this space, but then there's also a second hole drilled over here in the corner, down, down in this space here, almost like a drain. Not sure if that's what the hole's for, but it looks like that. But either way, our reference signal for our diaphragm is coming from the outlet side of the valve. So you can see the arrow shows us this is the outlet. So as the pressure changes in the system, it's referencing this outlet pressure, which changes the amount of pull or push on the diaphragm in relation to our spring pushing it back. So if we talk about what principles are being used in this device, we're doing a lot of pressure over surface area. So we have a big disc. So a small amount of pressure can have a large effect over that big disc. And then we're using some balancing forces with the spring here. But that's really it. It is interesting the amount of mass this cone has compared to the amount of mass that the, the plate has. It's almost as if they tried to balance some of the forces here. Because as that gas is flowing across this cone, the force of the gas moving across it is going to want to pull it down into that further open position. So it's almost like they tried to balance some of that out here. Interesting setup. I'll probably do the same with this one that I did with the 325L and just machine out some windows into the sides of it here so you can see exactly what's going on. Uh, as far as how it would fail, the, the big failure points in regulators are almost always the diaphragms. The diaphragms will eventually become brittle over time, and once they get brittle and start to crack, then they, they leak gas into the top cover here. And, and what usually happens is it around the base here, where the edges of the metal stamping kind of rub against it as it moves back and forth. And you'll start to see it here or around the edges here, where it's pinched by the cover. Not much else really to this. The only other thing that can really happen to it is in the event of oil or grease getting in it or chips and shavings from pipe fitting happening upstream. If that were to happen, we got oil or chips in here, 
we might jam this cone up in a way that it can't move anymore. And if that happened, we wouldn't be regulating flow anymore. So pretty straightforward, but an interesting look at a high volume gas regulator with no lockup. All right, well, that'll do it for today. Thanks for watching. Hi, folks. My name is Jack Kell, and I'm a senior technical trainer for SmartCare. The video you've just watched is part of a larger series of technical training videos we make available to our technicians at SmartCare. If you found this interesting and you'd like to see more, please subscribe. I'll be releasing a new component teardown video every Tuesday in 2022. If you're already a smart care technician and you have a part that you'd like to see me tear down, please reach out to me internally for shipping instructions. If you're not a smart care technician, but you or someone you know would like to learn more about a career as a service technician specializing in commercial restaurant equipment, please check out our open positions at www.smartcaresolutions.com forward slash careers. Thanks for watching.